Nancy Cantor is a university leader of international renown. She's an accomplished scholar with a track record of merging excellence and inclusiveness. Nancy will now share with us her vision for the next iteration of Rutgers University Newark. Our Chancellor, Nancy Cantor. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you. <laughs> First thing we're going to do is get a lower podium. <laughs> really, it's, it's wonderful to be here. Todd, Clem, Oliver, thank you all. And, and most importantly, really all of you. Um, we are the ones. So we'll get to that in a minute. Um, this is both an exciting moment, but it's really just a moment that starts the work all over again. And that's really what today is about. So. I want to begin by putting the strategic plan that will now be, I think, instantaneously on our website. Peter is nodding his head. It will be on our website and, and out there for everyone to see. But I want to put it in a historical context because nothing we do is new here. First of all, it's not new as you've heard already, and I'll give some more sense of that as we go. It's not new relative to the extraordinary history of this place and the leadership of Norm Samuels and Steve Diner and, and all of you who've been here and are making this happen. But it's also not new relative to the history of this country. And I think it's really important to start our analysis by thinking about the broader historical context of higher education's public mission. So we feel like today we live in a very divisive time. Right? That's a time of polarization, a time of zero-sum thinking, a time of intergroup conflict. There was another period in our history that was an extraordinary time of divisiveness. Over 150 years ago, when Abraham Lincoln, in the midst of the Civil War, got together with Justin Morrill, a senator from Vermont, and created the great land-grant institutions across this country, the public mission of higher education. And he created it very clearly with three things in mind, but most specifically to soothe that divisive landscape, to bring it together, to do the can canonical barn raising that you see up there. He said higher education institutions need to be in their community and of their community. They need to be producing innovation, not by themselves, but with others in the world, and tuned to the issues at that point of the agrarian farm economy. So first of all, innovation becomes the task of the public mission. Secondly, higher education needed, he said, and they said, to reach out to the sons and daughters, in that case, of the agrarian farmers, and bring them to universities as the road to social mobility. Innovation, social mobility. But most importantly, and most strategically, and I've always thought as a social psychologist that Abraham Lincoln was probably the best social psychologist known. Most importantly, Lincoln and Morrill said, the duty of higher education is to roll up your sleeves and raise those barns in communities, with communities, with a community of expertise that is beyond our particular boundaries. So the democratic practice became the canonical notion of democracy's colleges as they came to be known. Well, I'm only relatively briefly at Rutgers University, Newark, although I really feel like it's my home. But I know that we are a place that knows how to barn raise. We are a place that knows how to reinvent ourselves and invent ourselves in a way that is consistent with our history, but that is also consistent with the needs of the times today. 
And that's what our strategic plan aims to do. And it's your strategic plan. It's a strategic plan that came out of charrettes and town halls and listening tours, but really came out of the history of Rutgers University, Newark. So while in the strategic planning visioning process, we answered questions about what higher education needs to do in the public's opinion, we also thought about who we are. What's our story going forward? Going forward. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> now, Clem, as Oliver said, always both creates and steals the lines that we steal from him. So all roads do, in fact, lead to Newark. And all roads lead to Newark at so many levels because we are the ones that this country needs at this moment. Now, we are part of a wonderful broad and broadening system. And the university system strategic plan has a characterization that is us, to be broadly recognized as among the nation's leading public universities, preeminent in research, excellent in teaching, and committed to community. We are not just in Newark, we are of Newark. We are the essence of what it means to both honor history and move it forward. Newark's great Rabbi Yochum Prince, who spoke right before Dr. Martin Luther King at the 1963 March on Washington, and I know most of you are too young to remember that, but he said, neighbor is not a geographic term, he said to the hundreds of thousands of people at that march. It's a moral concept. It means our collective responsibility for the preservation of man's and women's dignity and integrity. That's what we want to be. That's what we can be. And that is a mission that both honors what Lincoln had in mind, but also a mission that resonates with lots of things happening in the higher ed landscape and in the national and international landscape that we can be a leading edge part of. So the National Science Foundation, for example, is taking really seriously what it means for the excellence of science to be about broader impacts that pull in broadening participation. And Rutgers University Newark is there. We are it. We know how to have broader impact and we know that we have broadening participation. The American Academy did a, did a national commission on the heart of the matter and talked about the breadth of interdisciplinary education and scholarly engagement, what it means to be in this world now is that life comes in messy bundles and expertise comes in places you wouldn't imagine it. And we, as students of the world, need that breath. International consortia are forming around the notion of higher education and its democratic role, its role in democracy, its role in those barn raisings. The Council of Europe, for example, is sponsoring and sponsors over now over a long period of time dialogues about higher education innovation and democracy. University of Pennsylvania and the Anchor Institution Task Force, of which we are a very vibrant part, is thinking about anchor institutions, institutions like ours, that have stability and resilience and intelligence to roll up our sleeves and help move the world forward. But there's another way in which our mission resonates. And that is, we have for a long time embraced our full talent pool. 
President Obama talked recently about the fact, and I quote, there's this huge cohort of talent that we're not tapping. And I wanted to call him and say, well, actually, some of us are. Come visit Newark. We are. We are that huge talent pool. We find talent in all the forms it comes in rather than just take it as it's given on some narrow measures that can be ranked or charted. We really look for talent because we know the issues of the future require something more than just the gloss of a test score. We do our test scores too, but, but we know that there is depth to be had, like the Posse Foundation thinks about talent, leadership, resilience, entrepreneurial spirit. We know that there are thousands of new members of this country who've joined waves of immigrants from prior generations, and they need to be at higher education's table. We know that we need that broadening participation, and we know that the vast majority of the nation's first-generation students will have their first taste of higher education at community colleges, so we need to bridge that higher education divide. If you take together our history and who we are already, we are the ones we've been waiting for. You wondered what those buttons were, some of you? We are dating ourselves, those of us in the front row here. The great civil rights lyric, we are the ones we've been waiting for. Rutgers University of New York is that. Go, black, go back to the Conklin Hall takeover. Go forward to our award-winning debate team. Think about the minority student program at the law school that Oliver mentioned. It was so way ahead of its time, and now they're all beginning to just catch up. But we get to go further, because we've already been there, been there, done that. We're the ones we've been waiting for, but we're also the ones they've been waiting for. And these are quotes that came out of the Charette process and the listening tours. The immigrant communities that created Newark's past and the immigrant communities represented by the university's student body, all of you, will together shape the future of the city and the state, and I'd go beyond. And my all-time favorite. Coming to Rutgers was a first for me, first in my family to go to college, first job I ever had, first internship, first time I thought I could believe in me. That's what college access is about. And that is indeed what we are about. Now when we roll up our sleeves, all of us, the ones we've been waiting for, and we try to tackle excellence at the intersection of ideas and challenges as well as the intersection of people, what we find are complex issues that require cross-disciplinary thinking, engaged thinking, long vision, not short-sightedness. We need to go local to global. We need to go from arts to economic development from the molecular to the behavioral to the big data. We need to go from entrepreneurs to big manufacturing. We need to go from the courtroom to the bedroom, from prison to school to community, from earth to air to water, and we do all that here. We know how to do it at Rutgers University in Newark. We know that the issues of our day are first of all, in messy bundles, and secondly, are things that require diverse communities of expertise and experts with and without pedigrees brought to the table. So that's a background for our strategic plan, 
And what came out of all of that great collision of ideas over all those months can't, of course, be captured easily and quickly. So I want you with us over the next months to read carefully that plan and figure out where you fit in the pieces of it, because everybody fits in the implementation of it. But it, it really em emphasizes this notion of the bundling of people and ideas and places that Lincoln enshrined. We need curricular and scholarly collaboration. We need to care deeply going forward about affordability for all the talent that is here and what they're going to do with their future. We need to figure out flexibility for our faculty and who are our faculty and what, what bundled work are they going to do across the disciplines and across the world. We need to get some creative and wired places and spaces on this campus, and that's the only way you can use the word campus. It's a physical location. We're not just a campus, we are a university. But we need those really creative wired places, right? We need places for collaboration. We need not to be just diverse, but to leverage our diversity. We need to tell our story. And we're going to do it with seed grants and study groups and signature initiatives. And then we're going to survey ourselves and we're going to have metrics, because you've got to have metrics in this world. OK, we'll have metrics. We know how to do that. So let's talk about the various priorities. We're going to invest in collaborative academic and research programs because they will be the cutting edge of what makes a difference in this world. Whether that is big data or it's health, education, advocacy, and law, or it's thinking about the business of fashion, or it's thinking about the intersection of documented and undocumented and what that means. We are going to create seed grants for the hottest, newest ways of thinking in cross-disciplinary degree programs, in research collaborations, in ways of engaging in the world. And we're going to figure out how to have metrics around collaboration, not something you see in the standard ways of assessing universities really important. We are going, of course, to invest in our students. So my, one of my favorite phrases to come out of the charrettes was inclusive admissions elite graduates. And boy, is that true. Boy, is that true about this place. I had the honor of sitting with the 2014 Phi Beta Kappa initiatives initiates, and this is a picture you can look more closely at in the plan. I would put that picture in the White House next to Obama's words. We are already producing inclusive elite graduates, and we'll do more. We'll have signature initiatives, like a 500-bed, the state-of-the-art facility, a residential honors living learning community dedicated in its curriculum to local citizenship in a global world, honoring the talent of those who are in our environs and need to be living and learning here. We will measure affordability not just in the packages we provide, but in lowering of student debt as our students leave here. We will think about outcomes and placements in textured ways. We will look at retention and graduation relative to where people came from. And we will think about satisfaction in terms that capture the opportunity to roll up your sleeves and barn raise and be democratic citizens. 
And while we're investing in our students, we will invest in our faculty and our graduate and professional students as well. Because just as the new talent of our students, of our world here, is seen right here, the new talent of the professoriate is seen right here as well. We need to think about the tenure clock when it takes so long to be competitive for federal grants. We need to think about how to evaluate and reward publicly engaged scholarship. When what your scholarship is, is creating a documentary of the newest Americans who are sitting right here. How do we evaluate and reward that kind of work? We need to think about professionals as professors and what is what does the tra career trajectory look like for the vast array of expertise we want here at Rutgers University, Newark? We need to think about how to grow in sponsored research, how to have our rankings in targeted disciplines, but how to be charting new career paths for the new professoriate. There is a in, sometimes invisible group that really epitomizes Rutgers University in Newark. And that is the support and professional staff of this place, many of whom have deep roots to greater Newark, and most of them, if not all of them, who are committed in very personal ways to the inclusive community we are building and continue to build. What does it mean for us to be an anchor institution for our staff? How can our staff be engaged in the kind of engagements in community, globally and locally, that we want to see as our signature? What does it mean to leverage the talents the experience, the authenticity, the on-the-ground experience of our staff? And how do we empower those voices, both with freedom and flexibility, but with shared governance at the table as well? Now, I am a big fan, as some of you who know my history, of the importance of spaces and places and design Never mind just STEM, we're also STEAM. We're also the arts and design in a very deep way that reflect what it means to dialogue across our differences and come together, what it means to collaborate. What does it mean in this so-called connected world that is superficially connected although we can't always get the connections to work here. <laughs> That's an inside joke. The technology doesn't work anywhere that I have touched. <laughs> and it will. But what does it mean to be deeply connected? What does it mean to connect across who we are and with each other? Well, one thing it means is that we have to have creative spaces and places for creative work. We're going to be in the Haynes Building. We're going to do amazing things in the Haynes Building and collaborate. We're going to bring our Jazz Institute folks, and they're going to set that place alive, as you heard the music as you came in today. We're going to have portrait studios and documentary filmmaking and galleries and art incubators. We are going to create. We are going to tell our stories and the stories of those in this community and beyond, right there down the street. We're going to connect Life Sciences One to Life Sciences Two. And there'll be incubation space there and collaboration space. And we'll bring some of those folks from RBHS. And we'll all get in there together. But most importantly, we need the little places 
all around this university and in our broader community where we can collaborate and create across disciplines. And when we do that, we will genuinely invest in our anchor institution collaboration whether it's in the New York City of Learning Collaborative for K-12 Pathways, whether it's in building with our neighbors, as Prince said, strong, healthy, safe neighborhoods, whether it's in that arts and cultural district right out there. Geography wrong. We will be rolling up our sleeves for economic development as we already are, whether it's sustainable manufacturing or it's urban entrepreneurship. We will be there. We will be thinking about what earth and environmental science has to do with greening the neighborhoods and the land around us and with us. We will be thinking deeply about civic science, and I don't mean civics. I mean science with the people who we are with, living jointly, our neighbors. And we will be part of many experiments nationally. We will be a pilot with the Democracy Collaborative's Anchor Institution dashboard to really be sophisticated in understanding what a great urban, diverse, public university can do with its neighbors in creating prosperity, civic health, and dialogue. And when we do all that, we will do it because we will learn better how to leverage our diversity and build civic dialogue. We will not just take numbers for granted as they are. John Dewey used to say, democracy needs to be tended day in and day out in the lived relationships, person to person. I am not going to be satisfied, and neither will you, with just talking about diversity. Let's do it. Let's think about what it really means to dialogue in sophisticated ways, in classrooms, in laboratories, in the art studio, in community, in neighborhoods, in prison, in this community, bridging all those gaps that make us about as divided a landscape in America today as we were over 150 years ago. This is probably, ironically, the hardest of the strategic priorities for us to actually fulfill. This is the one that I most think will take all of us to be the ones we've been waiting for. Let's just not talk. Let's walk that talk. And when we do that, we will get to tell our story over and over again, partly to each other. We need to work on internal communication, not just on what's out there. We need to figure out what it means for student affairs and academic affairs to talk to each other for scientists to talk to artists, for students to talk to faculty, for staff to have a voice. So we need to tell our story. We need to work on that. We have lots of opportunities. We have the 350th anniversary of the city of Newark. Never mind, also the 250th anniversary of Rutgers, but Clemwell guide us in that. We have a set of people wanting an identity of our own. We're going to be good collaborators in the system. We couldn't be doing any of this without the system. But we also are ourselves. 
So in the charrettes, a repeated thing was, we need our own swag. We need to know who we are. So I put a challenge out there. The, the R thing is OK, but what's the N? What's the Newark thing, right? Who? What's R? What do we? What do we look like? What do we want to be? We'll have to be doing that. Now, as we do strategic implementation, it will require both a set of ways of thinking of ourselves in terms of efficiency and effectiveness and how we, how we engage alumni, how we raise our fundraising, how we think about what it means to be Rutgers University newer within a broader system, making use of all the remarkable talent in the central offices, many of whom, by the way, are here today and have traveled to be here, and I really appreciate that. We will think about what academic and student affairs do together for a one-stop support system. We will think about how deans and their colleagues talk both within and across the units that they lead. And in doing this, we will fulfill, I firmly believe, we will fulfill two things. We will fulfill the serious commitment to push forward ambitiously and assertively to be that diverse urban research institution that leaves no stone unturned in its impact on scholarship, social mobility, and urban civic life. Or, to say it much more eloquently, as one of our CJ graduates said at her graduation, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. I don't think we're going to miss, but we'll land among the stars in any case. Thank you.